with great pleasure, introduce to you Nathan Miller. Well, hello. Obviously, my name is Nathan Miller, House of Parnifiello. Funny enough, I didn't know that until about probably a year ago, I would imagine. But if you can set that up, that'd be awesome. Uh, title is Free Will Act Indeed. It's an explanation, explanation of sorts. If you were free, you would act indeed. That's the bottom line. That's how you gain power. That's how you expand yourself into the realms of jurisdiction of law, things of that nature. But I guess to get back, thank you. I guess to get back to at least the original beginning, um, more or less I was arrested about a year and a half ago. Um, I was traveling to the Gem and Mineral Show in Arizona, Tucson, awesome thing if you haven't been. I didn't make it though, uh, I was in Utah. And I had a few things that they're not too happy if you have on your person while you're going through Utah, we'll leave it at that. I ended up in jail for over 20 hours. Um, more or less, I, I'd never been in a situation like that before. I, more or less, my whole entire life, I've followed codes of conduct, these laws or whatever we want to call them, these acts, I guess, if you want to get into it. But um, the day I got released, they sent me to the court the next day, which it even said on the document, you cannot be placed into court within 24 hours of being released from jail. So then, uh, more or less, I had a first question when I went to the court the next morning and said, well, why am I even here? And the judge said, well, we thought that you would jump bail. So then I asked after I was doing some research at McDonald's, because they have free internet, um, they were more or less contriving me being a criminal. So they were inducing criminal intent upon me without any right, without any purpose, without anything. More or less, I live in Montana, I was arrested in Utah, so they think, of course he's gonna flee. Because we're not innocent until proven guilty anymore, which is kind of my point. Um, by the end of this though, this quote is going to mean a lot because it's meant a lot to me my whole life. Because all I've seen since I was about probably three years old, my first memory is 16 months, but three is when I really started getting kind of angry about why everybody hurts each other and why nothing really makes sense. So once you know this, you're going to be one of these people that has to either do what's right or be held accountable for the indifference that you may have. I would hope you don't. But moving into the reality of things, I'm going to talk about a panopticon. I know people have kind of destroyed and expanded this idea, concept, whatever you want to call it. I mean, really, it's a prison setup. But uh, the panopticon I'm going to think about or bring to you, more or less, is the idea that putting someone in a psychological box where they're blind to the prison that they've created for themselves and they therefore have no concept of how to get out of this prison because they've created it for themselves, And they don't want to admit that, more or less, but getting into that, we're gonna talk about land and water real quick. Because it's all about jurisdiction when you talk about uh, free will act and deed. Um, jurisdiction of water, maritime, versus common law of the land. There's too many things to get into. If you wanna do more research, I'm available. Speak more loudly? Sorry. I have a deep voice, I'm kind of worried about overbearing. But uh, land and water, getting back to jurisdiction, understanding that there was a jurisdiction on this land, the continental United States of America, before there was the federal government, before there was anything. If we want to get into it, it goes back to before 1868, it goes back to Lincoln, uh, the abolishment of slavery, which I won't entirely get into because that's even more of a detail. But speaking of the land jurisdiction, it is common law court. It's not common law in quotes. It is common law of the land that we are on. So more or less that was destroyed um, around the time of Lincoln and moving into also 1933, talking about the Federal Reserve, the IMF, getting into those aspects of things. That's all maritime law. But that was accomplished by more or less creating 
the idea of birth versus birth. And those are not even approximately equal to each other, which I had fun making that symbol. But when you're born, this is where the jurisdiction exchange occurs. Your mother gives birth to you. You're a human being, you're a soul, you're a sovereign entity, you are something that is made manifest. So the key on that, and then make it a birth with an E instead, because your mother is legitimately turned into a ship who has come to harbor, and she has made manifest a product that therefore needs to be certified, because where did it come from? What is it? What size is it? What color hair does it have? What color eyes does it have? Is it a male or female? The same aspects you would apply to a vehicle that was coming off of a boat from any other country if you were getting a Ferrari or a whatever. I don't really care for any of that. But aside from that aspect, we are delivered unto a system that more or less people don't seem to understand that they're applying to you when they give you a birth certificate. But when you have a record of live birth, you are proven to be created by your parents. You have a certain name with a middle initial. You are not given your last name until they attach that in a all capital letters creation that is more or less your birth certificate. And that is what separates freedom versus liberty. Um, liberties are something you have because, well, you think of the Statue of Liberty. Why isn't it on land? I guess would be another concept to think of because liberties are something you give to people in the Navy when they come to a port. You give them liberties to go about what they might want to do. You, they don't have freedom. They have liberties to do things. So that's really the switch over. They want to take the freedom that you might think you have and give you liberties instead, which are laws, codes, acts, all of these things more or less. If you think about it, it's all acting. Who's wearing an outfit? You have judges with outfits, police with outfits. Any of these people are literally liberty enforcers, making sure you only have the liberties given unto you instead of true freedom. So I guess just to get into, because I need to kind of point out some aspects of a birth certificate to kind of jump back at those bullet points. Uh, we see this, obviously. We see, oh, a birth certificate. Everybody has one of these, correct? I mean, if you don't, I'd like to talk to you after this. But aside from that, um, this birth certificate, you notice, first thing you might notice is everything is in all capital letters. Uh, that's one point that I pointed out with the birth versus birth. On a record of live birth, you would have Robert Thomas of Herman Lieber and Thelma Beatrice Gouch. You would be Robert Thomas only. The aspect and the funny things that, you know, people don't really understand, they don't really conceptualize more or less, is that this is different. There's a maxim of law that says if something is not the same, if it, it is different. It's that simple. Like there's, you can go into court, which I guess would be my first example of a court situation of mine, which is in Utah as I've fought the entire case for over a year and no one will speak to me anymore because my whole point is that I am not the person that you're looking for. Now, it sounds funny, but Nathan Miller is a name that is mine in lower and capital letters. It is not this creation here, which honestly, if you know anything about trust law, I mean, I'd love to get into every aspect of this, but more or less, this is the bottom line of things. They're creating a trust in your name by the all titles caps. It's the same application they would use for a corporate entity, anything of that degree. And then immediately upon birth, you're lost at sea or dead or considered missing and taken out debts upon you that then cannot be paid because you're missing, but more or less, I have to use the word surety because you become surety for this title now with the certification of your birth. You legitimately have to keep honor for this trust, which is why you have to abide to laws, you have to abide to acts, all of the new things like I think it's on average 2,000 new laws are created every year. You don't have the time to figure out what those are. You don't have the time to analyze and interpret all of that. 
But legitimately, the whole point is that it's a joke. On SEAL, jeez, on SEAL, there is no SEAL on their birth certificate, which is why I used it as an example. This is actually an invalid certificate of birth that someone is actually using as their birth certificate which is how it all kind of brought me into it because this was the same situation of my birth certificate. There is no seal. There was no signing in blue ink. It was black ink with no seal. So that's obviously a question you want to ask the Bureau of Vital Statistics. Well, what is going on? Um, I obviously have a fraudulent document uh, and they don't want to do anything for you except give you a new one. You know, all well, we can give you a duplicate copy of that because that must be what you're asking for, uh, more or less no. Um, but you can't, uh, you can't really act aggressive with these people. You can't, they don't know what they're doing, you know? They really don't. They follow their guidelines. It's like a police officer coming up to your car and giving you a ticket. If you ask him if this is an original bill, he's going to look at you with an aggressive tone and <laughs> more or less you might end up arrested. But it's the concepts of treating people like you're a child and they're a child. And that all you're trying to do is reveal the truth unto them that they can't even see, more or less. They just follow their guidelines and make their days easier for themselves, I'd have to think. But uh, the point of all this is there's a solution, thankfully. Uh, that I've had to find a long and hard way through a man in Oregon and a man in Boston and a couple other people in Houston, Texas, where I was born, thankfully enough. But legitimizing the fact that this, that this certificate was created is the answer to all things, period. After that, you have established yourself as a free man. Authenticating your birth certificate with the Bureau of Vital Statistics of where you were born and then duly authenticating it through DC proves that not only was this created in fraud at the time, we now have a correlation to now that yes, that person did have the right to create this legal entity or fiction that you become a trustee unto and gain no benefits from but only pay into. So once you have that, you have all things if you know how to apply yourself in the court situation. I don't have the time to get into even a scratch of the surface of what I've been learning, and more or less, I'm almost out of time as we speak right now. And I've barely even covered the first, probably, day of research that I've done in the past year and a half. So more or less, this was as much as I could get out in this time period, and if there's anything that any of you caught from this, or it might have inklinged into your heart as an understanding, please reach out to me, because there is a movement happening. There is free men versus the sovereign illegitimacy, which a sovereign citizen is an oxymoron. It is not real. You cannot be a citizen, especially after 1933, and also be quote unquote sovereign, which we can't also get into. So more or less, I guess I'm calling out to anyone who's willing, get your birth certificate authenticated, duly authenticate it, so that you can prove that there was indeed a fraud created against your will, against your consent, and that you've been having to pay for your entire life. And in the end goal, you would apply a bill in equity to the United States government after you establish the fact that you know who you are and what was done to you. And more or less, you would be asking them for all the equity that was produced and related to anything that is involved with, in my case, Nathan Miller Parnafiello, Nathan M. Parnafiello, Parnafiello Nathan Miller. How many different ways do you want to say a corporate entity? It's it's all of them, any of the above. So please, if you have questions, I'm sure you may, because I haven't been able to even cover nearly anything I would have wished to, because I could spend most likely an hour and 45 minutes on the word bona fide. So please, if you have any questions, ask, 
or ask me for my contact information and I can give you packets. There are also speeches that we're working on, me and Mark out in Oregon, so that we can actually apply this to, I guess, more or less people who are interested in it, more than just trying to apply it in a general forum. So thank you. Uh, just recently, actually, <laughs> serendipity is not the word. Um, just last week, a man in Houston, Texas, aside from any of the reasons why he was actually in court, proved through the Supreme Court after appealing and won $1.8 million for the fact that he was even called into court. Because when you understand jurisdiction, that's why Utah can't speak to me, because I am a man, and they're looking for a fiction. So I can tell them happily, like, feel free to find that man. If you find him, let, let me know, because I would love for him to actually do what he was supposed to be doing with my trust. Because it's all a sick game. It's not, it's not even real. That's why it's called a legal fiction, a legal entity. It's not even there. The fact that we consent to its existence is the only weight that's holding it up. As soon as you, as soon as you don't give your consent, I mean, rebut everything. I rebut everything. If anyone says anything about me, I will write a document. It's that simple. But then you have that, indeed, the whole point of it, you're not consenting to what they're saying about you. You're rebutting any and all presumptions or assumptions. They may think that the way I speak, I'm a lawyer. I'm going to let you know right away, I'm not a lawyer. Because then I would have to be a part of a bar association that's coordinated with the crown. And that's a whole other speech also. But there's so many things that are just tied to the consenting to being that person. I don't have a driver's license. I drove from Montana to here in my car. You don't need registration. You don't need insurance. As soon as you register your vehicle, you're saying this vehicle is now yours, government. Have fun. It's that, it's like once you start seeing the reality of what you're consenting to when you're doing things, things like why would you need a certificate to do anything legal? If you can't certify me to murder someone, why would I have to have a license or a certification for doing something legal? It's just, it's a mindset, and which is why I brought up the fact of a prison that we're putting ourselves in, that we're not truly understanding. And of course, we have that kind of pride of humanity. I'm doing what I should be doing, or I'm proud of what I'm doing. But you know what? I got kicked to the curb, literally, and I was in pink jumpsuit. Like, I had nothing, and that's where I found myself as a man, not of who is this person? Why am I paying for this? Why can I... Why do I have to follow these laws? There's no answer to that, really. It's because you're doing it. If you don't want to, don't. And I would love to show you how, legitimately. As of this point, I've been through six court cases. When I get home, I get to speak to a judge, and he'll ask me what I wish. And I'm going to ask for a particular situational, and I'm going to get it just because there are codes of conduct, there are ways that they have to abide to their own law systems, and once you at least establish yourself correctly, you own the system. I mean, it, there's quotes that go back to the 1800s, 1700s, that a man has more jurisdiction than the federal government. I would love to show you that that's true, if you would give me the opportunity. And 15 minutes is absolutely not enough time. but. Please, if you'd like to talk to me or get any information, let me know if there's any more questions.